advantages of one another. We've got the big guys inside. They rely on a lot of three-point shooting, and both teams really rely on their benches. Alabama just a little farther along with Avery Johnson at the helm. As far as talent goes, Georgia still trying to build. Obey Day with a nifty move. One of and he scores first as we look at the Alabama starting five. Kyra Lewis, the 17-year-old freshman, leading the way for the Crimson Tide. This is Tevin Mack. Puts it up there. Looks like it was blocked by Obey Day. He does so many things so well. Hey, he's a great ball handler. He's a press breaker for Georgia, sometimes against the man-to-man -man press. They'll give it to Nicholas Blackston, and no center is able to put much pressure on him as he's bringing the ball up the court, leading this team in assists and steals. He is a phenomenal young sophomore for the Dolphins. He tosses it down low to Hammonds. Fellow sophomore, kick out to Jackson up top. Shot clock down to seven for Claxton. Claxton. Hammonds going to have to fire. Late clock situation, and Hammonds buries the triple. Tell you what, I like another play that Derek Obede made. He had the early basket. He had the block shot defensively, and they're a, a good pass to get Georgia into a shot at the end of the shot clock. Lewis misfires on the three. Georgia up by five with the basketball early going. Harris to Obede. Obede lost it. A scrum ensues. Claxton clears. Great ball movement. Sets up the three from the corner. Kicks off the iron and over the backboard out of bounds. <laughs> a really tough situation what he inherited in Bloomington. Georgia's got some good talent that he inherited. Good players. He likes his roster. They just need to be more consistent and not allow shots like that from Tevin Mack. Well, the drive to the basket once again creates a scoring opportunity. Tevin Mack only a 30% three-point shooter, but with such a good look like that, he's able to knock it home. Obede gets his paws on it and banks it home. Obede. Four early points for Obede. Eric Obede again, active around the basket, getting another bucket off the blind pass from Claxton. Inside, Claxton with a flat-footed block though. last season, and the Tide looking to make it back. That is what makes this game so important. Turnover one at that right of the hands of Hammonds two on one great touch pass from Obede and Hammonds on the flush I am just amazed by Derek Obede his ability to handle the basketball making really smart decisions he's been inserted into the starting lineup by Tom Crean tonight and he's been effective Mack in traffic out of bounds to Georgia hey, <laughs> flare. I, I don't know if I've seen Obede flare Hey, let him go to work. Obede feeling it. That was a little heat check for Obede. <laughs> well, he led this team in scoring against South Carolina with 16 points. Earned the start tonight and playing well. Ingram. Brick. And cleaned up by Claxton. Claxton at 6'11", gliding into front court. Finds Harris along the baseline. Offensive foul. And you saw who drew it. That's Herbert Jones, who's taken a team-high 16 charges this year after setting the school record last year, taking 23 of them. Big game this is for Alabama. Cairo Lewis with a big-time move. That gets the crowd riled up. Four-point game. Inside, Obede, kick out Claxton on a three. Claxton got it back. Obede is on fire today. <laughs> Every time he gets his hands on the basketball, he's making the right decisions. Six early points for Obede and an assist to go along with it. What do we talk about at the top? Offensive rebounding, we just saw it for both sides. Yeah, both these teams really rely on those second chance points. Lewis, that time, another offensive rebound, and Ingram does what he does best, penetration. If you can't get the second chance points, how about the third chance points? Alabama pounding the offensive glass, finally coming up with a layup. Jackson to Obede. Obede feeling it. Obede gets the bounce on the hook shot. Who is that man? 34 in black. <laughs> well, he is a veteran player, an experienced player. That senior, he is 
showing that experience and that fire. Great hustle leads to Hammonds on another flush. To see in this Bulldog team, amazingly in that game against Texas, they turned it over 26 times, yet they are still able to put 98 points on the board due to their hot shooting. We're getting that done tonight here in Tuscaloosa as well. Inside, an easy bucket for Alabama out of the break. That's Galen Smith, the sophomore out of Clinton, Mississippi. Alabama getting a little activity around the basket. That's been the recipe for Georgia so far in this ball game. All that activity that they've had, getting the ball down close to the rim, has forced Alabama's defense to struggle. Jackson on a stop and go. Kick out up top, Willard on a three. Georgia likes to shoot the three a lot. They don't hit them at a high percentage, 34% on the year. See Willard's there, only a 14% three-point shooter. He got that inside out attempt. He's just not a very good shooter. Inside, Obede over back-to-back -back buckets for the sophomore. Galen Smith off that Alabama bench. The recipe for Avery Johnson's club, the bench, has been so effective. Georgia cooling off. Bama on the run. Bama on a fifth. Check the basket when that shot goes up. One of the first things he talked to us today about what they have to do to win this game, get back on defense, win the running game. One of the things Avery Johnson talked about as far as keys to the game, he wants his club to get out running, get some of these easy baskets in transition. Obede, a little too hot to handle. Bam off the turnover, it's Lewis, sneaks it through, and we are tied. Very nearly a five-second count there. Nicholas Claxton barely beat the five count to get it in the Turtle Jacksons. Alabama has cranked up the defense. Obede. Obede's feeling it. Finally misses. He has come out aggressive. Alabama, an 8-0 run since the break. Mack, no, but the minus five and a half in turnover margin. That is by far the worst number in the SEC. And Alabama, no great shakes at minus 1.2 in turnover margin. But that's the experienced team in Alabama. A lot of veteran players who have been around the league a few times, and they understand how to make those winning plays at the end of the game, how to do the things necessary to be successful. Great pass by Harrison, drops a dime off to Mike Edwards, who doesn't play a whole lot of minutes. Finish. Edwards averages three minutes a game on the year. Mack inside. Smith bellied up by Hammonds. Tapped around and corralled by Edwards. Smith finally misses a shot. Crimson Tide getting that production. You never know where it's going to come from off that Alabama bench. But they score over 33 points a game from the bench. About 40% of their scoring coming from guys not in the starting lineup. There's Harrison to Hammonds with eight to shoot. Hammonds going to go all the way and banks it. How about the soft kiss off the glass by the talented sophomore Hammonds? He's got nine. Georgia getting back to what they do so well, getting the activity around the basket, getting those hard cuts in there, making the Alabama defense work. Beautiful pass and a finish by Lewis. And this is really fun offensive basketball. Georgia quickly on the other end. Bodies falling all over the place. Held the entire series. Dwayne Wade got every single blessed call. Avery, you were robbed. All right, back to this game. Mike Morgan, Barry Booker, 19 apiece here at the Coleman Coliseum. It's been 13 years. <laughs> And the Mavs did get themselves one. Yeah, the Mavericks are up. 0 0.2 points a game, so he is way ahead of pace here early on, the senior from Westland, Michigan. Vanderbilt at the Memorial Gym. Barry Booker's alma mater, where he used to rain threes with picture-perfect form. And those Commodores, they have had so many chances. That game against Arkansas last night came down to the wire. Commodore just have not been able to make the plays to come out with a win. 0 for 9 so far in SEC play. Yeah, it's been Heartbreak Hotel for Bryce Drew and company. Inside, hook shot, no. Rebound picked up. Going on the board, we're about a 
an 80-point pace for this ball game for both these clubs. So a fun one here. Defense optional so far in this <laughs> ball game. My kind of basketball. Kick out pass to Harrison. Up top, Hammonds. Now Harris walks. Georgia each side with three giveaways thus far. For Georgia, it's really plagued them all year long. It, it, I don't think there's any more frustrating thing for a head coach when your team, who does a lot of things, a lot of things well, but they continually cough it up. Yeah, worse than the SEC with nearly 17 turnovers per game. Worst in turnover margin, as we mentioned, minus 5.4. Jim Nances of the world, you guys have tremendous power. I always say, if, if, if I had that power, Barry Booker, I would use it in less nefarious ways. <laughs> Maybe I'd win a lottery or two. <laughs> you would stop causing fight. Six, seven sophomore by way of Greensboro, Alabama. Thank you, Tony Romo. For you guys yeah. wield it recklessly. Well, Neil might be nefarious, but I promise you. <laughs> That is, that is just not oh, a yeah. card. Is that a big <laughs> shot free throw? Wow. They don't ask you how. Okay. <laughs> there we go. A little three box action. Yeah, I said it. Green, <laughs> Avery, and the action here on the floor, which has been furious. 21-19, Alabama up by two. The tide, they've had some trouble guarding Georgia so far in this ball game. So they switch into the zone defense, try to keep that ball out of the middle. Laxton on Dante Hall. He just kind of tossed that one up there. And then more versatile players really in the country. Charles, excuse me, Nicholas Claxton, the son of Charles. <laughs> I know I do that at least once this year. To watch his progression of being the kind of guy we're talking about as an All-American, not just All-SEC. Yeah, lottery pick type talent. Only uh, 220 pounds. He's got some, got some weight to gain. But man. Chance to catch up with Sir, Sir Charles last week down the road in Auburn, Alabama. There's a lane violation, by the way, on Petty. So another attempt for Claxton, and this time he makes good. Claxton, a couple of a couple of hesitations in his uh, foul shooting routine. He got the second chance and converted him. Johnson trapped and over and back. Up in that corner to begin with, and definitely don't pick it up in that corner when you got two guys on you. Good job by Georgia. They are making some smart plays. I'm just so impressed with the Georgia Bulldog Club. Hard to believe they are 1-7 in the league as well as they have looked tonight. Okay, day. Ultra aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a new level of aggressiveness for Derek Okay, day. And then an illegal's cause as they are a bubble team. We'll get into the Alabama metrics later on to show you how delicious they are right now. That's the way this league is this year. You got teams like like Vanderbilt that's going to be really tough at home. This would certainly qualify as a loss that could be detrimental to the cause at home against a 1-7 Georgia squad. And by the way, the net, the all-important NCAA evaluation tool, they are 45th right now in the country. Hammonds misfires. Cool N-E-T, net. Has uh, several components to it. You can start tossing around offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency and strength of strength of record and all these kind of elements that are part of the stat. I guess we've pretty much buried RPI. Huh? Rest in peace. To the ratings percentage index had a good run. <laughs> it had a long run, probably longer than it should have. <laughs> a lot of coaches would agree with that. You see another fantastic year, top to bottom, five of the top ten recruiting classes in the Southeastern Conference. Here it all starts, bringing that talent in. Alabama and Georgia continue to get it done, and the, the bar is raised for all the SEC schools. Avery Johnson, really good relationship with Nick Saban. Two guys who have gotten to know each other quite well in Avery's four years here in Tuscaloosa. Here's Jackson for the Bulldogs in a tie game as we near the seven-minute mark of the first half. Jackson. Oh, nice. Fine Georgia Bulldogs. That is N. Gumeze. We haven't seen a whole lot of it. He's a talented freshman out of Savannah. They feel in time is going to become a very good player. Clack, 
Claxton showing his talent, put on the rebound, and bringing it down and finish it. Claxton top floor on that offensive rebound. Nice yeah. stuff. His first basket of the night limited only two foul shots prior to that. Claxton very versatile. Claxton number one rebounder in the SEC, 9.3 a game, and many of those are like the one you just saw, offensive, and that walk. Montish with the aggressive slam showing you all of the things that he can do on that last trip down the court. Jackson, fortunate bounce <laughs> roll, winds up right into the waiting hands of Ben Gomez. A. Great pass, Turner. Kyra Lewis, full throttle, blows by everybody. Alabama continuing to have success in transition, pushing the ball down the court, beating that Georgia defense back. A runner by Wilridge. Really good scoring opportunity there by Wilson. Just couldn't get it home. Mack on a three. Ponging mode with each team getting control of it seemingly for a few moments. And then the other team snatches that momentum away. Jackson from long range. Top three is okay for that shot. Georgia's very aggressive shooting threes, much like his teams in Indiana were very aggressive from behind the arc. Harris. Peel back. Aggressive drive that last trip by Kyra Lewis Jr. Another aggressive move to the basket that just wouldn't fall. Blackston. No call. Well, they're letting play. <laughs> no a walk couple call. fouls. An offensive <laughs> foul, a defensive foul, and finally the arm there. By Alex Reese, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a travel as well, but Georgia ends up with a foul shot. And it's fifth ranked LSU and 17th ranked Kentucky. Auburn right now undefeated 5-0 in gymnastics. One for two. I'd like to uh, gymnast back in the day, no? Journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to mix that up. <laughs> it's common. I understand Galen Smith right now being evaluated for a head injury. Remember he yeah. took one in the dome a few minutes ago. He'll be updated on all his details coming across our table. I thought he looked a little glassy-eyed there after that blow that he took earlier to the chin. A tough two-point shot. That's what you want as a defense. Let's see if he can make it. Don't bail him out with a foul. He does work on his shot. Avery Johnson tells us all the time he's got the green light from three. Doesn't shoot many of them. But this is a young man, I think... The question about it. He has the talent, the athleticism. This needs to be more aggressive at the off offensive end of the court. Not, not many players in basketball that you have to light the fire under, tell them, hey, take more shots, be more aggressive. If Dazon Ingram in that category of guys that just need to look for his shot more often. Another give and go, but that time Ingram anticipates and grabs it for Alabama. Giddens, kick out pass, oh, Petty was thinking three, but Butterfingers. Petty. Where'd that come from? Hey, speaking of guys who can be more aggressive, John Petty getting into the lane, nice floating finish. And he was uh, anticipating letting that three-pointer go on that inside-out play. Didn't catch it before he tried to make the play. Crump to Hammonds, high post. Now Hightower, baseline jumper is true. <laughs> Hightower, shooting that one extremely high. To get, the, get it to fall, beautiful shot. Mack, doing what he does best. Music. Galen Smith, who we mentioned, took that shot in the head earlier. He is going to be out for the rest of the game with that head injury. So Bama's front line going to be a little shorthanded the rest of the way. Nothing shorthanded about that beautiful take by Hightower. Four points for the 6'5 sophomore out of Lithonia, Georgia. Significant blow for Alabama. Galen Smith at six points in just five minutes of play. 
Lewis makes it look so easy, doesn't he? That was. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why. Georgia might want to do a better job defensively on Kyra. Well, he does have that blazing quickness. Travis put a make his way to the basket. That's the effect of the three-point shot. You have to respect the three-point shooter so people are reluctant to help so a guy can turn the corner and get all the way for an easy bucket. Well, you mentioned three-point shooting. That is the top three-point shooter for Georgia. Tyree Crump at 41% knocks it down to tie it up. Georgia's bench surged to a 14-10 advantage as far as bench scoring. The Georgia Bulldogs, they've, uh, both these teams like to lose, use their depth. Five on the shot clock for Petty. In and out. Under 90 seconds to play, first half. Hightower walked. Go. 35 all. Neither team has been able to really separate here in this first half. Entertaining, free-flowing ball game. It's been fun to watch. Lewis again with the basket with ease. Well, Lewis Jr. starting to heat up, starting to take advantage of his scoring opportunities. Lewis leading all scores with 12 under a minute to go. down low, finds Obede, count the basket. Wide open as Georgia has drivers or cutters heading down that lane. They're getting easy scoring opportunities. Obede now working on an 11-point first half. Georgia back up by a point. Mack takes it all the way. A lot of breakdowns from Georgia defensively. Yeah, both teams, you know, they're trying to defend the three-point shot, trying to stick with the shooters out there. But you got to provide some help when the drive to the basket occur. Obede on a full head of steam. <laughs> Squad has done a, a great job at the defensive end of the court. We talked about the big guys to start this game. Dante Hall for Alabama, Nicholas Claxton for Georgia. Not a lot of activity from those two in the first half, but this game will be decided by those two. Obede, super aggressive tonight. Misses, but offensive rebound for Jordan Harris. Sets up Hammonds. And finally, Hall corrals it for Alabama. Great hustle by Jordan Harris to give his team an extra possession. Dante Hall able to pull the rebound to get Alabama to the other end of the court. Think about Georgia all year that cannot be denied despite the conference record, and we've seen it so far tonight. Max effort every game, every play. I mean, they play hard under Coach Green. They absolutely do. Limited with their personnel, but they give the effort, and you can see. But Tom Green shoot around. I wanted to go run some suicides, <laughs> and do some drills, take some charges. And he is a guy that is high energy throughout seems to have a lot of positive vibes going through him in this program, despite the fact they've obviously faced adversity. The record's not where you'd want it. But a lot of things to be excited about for Georgia in the near future. Obede says the future is now tonight. Another offensive board for the Georgia Bulldogs. And dogs hanging right in. 12 points for Derek Obede. And he's got 13 as he sneaks that one through. Tevin back. Tevin Mack has been effective from three that time, getting into the paint to get the finish. Both these teams have done a really nice job getting the basketball down around the basket. So smart offense by both coaches. Claxton down low. Rims off. Hammonds tapped it into the hands of Lewis. Lewis on the attack. Finds Ingram. Mack feeling it. Mack, then shot off the window. Evan Mack and Kyra Lewis Jr. carrying the load offensively for the Crimson Tide. 15 points for Tevin Mack. No dice for Jackson on the three. Not a good shot there. Leads the transition opportunity for Bama. Stop and pop for Kyra Lewis. 
by Turtle Jackson. Surprised his teammates. They're not able to get in rebounding position, and that leads to a transition bucket by the Crimson Tide. Claxton, aggressive, and gets a whistle. It's like Jackson did with that bad shot. It is trouble for the defense. Claxton gets a friendly bounce on the first free bench here soon with those three fouls. Nick Claxton who leads the SEC in both rebounding and blocks. Played for the U.S. Virgin Islands national team. Back in two, that's where his father is from. Charles Claxton. And I remember Charles Claxton when he was playing for Georgia. Much different body type. They're both tall, yes, but father was a much bigger player. That's a big time performance by Tevin Mack. Tevin Mack lighting it up for the tie. 18 points for the junior. Fired the basketball at the veteran official Anthony Jordan. Anthony Jordan looked at him like, dude. <laughs> What is that? What did I ever do to you? <laughs> okay, no offense, Mr. Referee. <laughs> Mac! Oh my goodness! Oh, it, was Tevin. it was Tevin Mack who was in the zone when Alabama knocked off Kentucky in this building. He is back in the zone tonight. 21 points. Timeout. Well, he's one off that season high. He's got 21, and there's a whole lot of time left in this ball game. Pull a pass inside the Claxton. Great play out of Another nice set from Tom Cream to get his big guy, Nicholas Claxton. Georgia is going to have a chance to win this game. They need the big man to get it rolling. Claxton has taken on the assignment of trying to handle, <laughs> trying to slow down Tevin Mack. Claxton got a block right there, the SEC's block shot leader. Obede. Yep. He's having a pretty solid night <laughs> at the office tonight as well. Deep three, not high tower. Appropriately named to Sean Hightower with that high arching shot. He has found the bottom of the net on a couple of occasions tonight. Lewis on a blow by. Can't finish. Claxton on the rebound. Georgia hanging in, only a six-point margin here. Ball movement to Claxton, and back into the hands of Hightower up top. Claxton, that pass just. Aaron Lewis, who has played a rather flawless game in his own right, six assists, no turnovers. Shake Claxton. Claxton trying to put out the fire. Oh, the match is a flame. Lewis on a three. Kyra Lewis. 17 points to go along with those six assists. An excellent ball movement by Alabama. Dazon Ingram getting into the lane, giving the good shooting opportunity to Kyra Lewis Jr. Tower, touch shot, got bumped. Ingram. Beautiful feed, but Lewis had it blocked. John Harris with the block. And then Ingram returns the favor on the other end with a block. And a steal on the inbounds. Perfect right by Penny. Ingram back to the Danger zone for Georgia, down 11, Obede, no. And offensive rebound again, it's Willridge. Three ball, mm. high tower. Air ball. Lewis weaving. Inside. Willridge knocked it loose out of bounds. One defender. Very little hope of handling that situation in a positive manner. Good finish by John Pitt. 
Turnovers plaguing Georgia all year long. It's a simple inbounds pass turnover. Georgia here in that number two. Florida squaring off at seven. And then LSU. Kentucky Heights also streaming live on the ESPN app. He is Barry Booker. I am Mike Morgan. We are in Tuscaloosa, Coleman Coliseum, Alabama, trying to improve to five and four in conference play against a very stingy Georgia Bulldog squad. High Tower. Obey Day. No. Tapped around. Out of bounds. Alabama defense has been stronger here in the second half, not allowing as many drives to the basket. And the occasional pass inside to, to the basket to give Georgia some scoring chances. And also for Georgia, Derek Obede, he had the hot start, not so hot this second half. Obede here. And finally, three minutes and 23 seconds was the scoring drought. Georgia snaps it, Derek Obede. And then Ingram with a quick response on the other end. We told you, Avery wants him to shoot more threes. There's one. When he's open, he shoots it, and he was wide open. Once again, in transition, Georgia not getting out. That was after a made basket for the Dogs. Not getting into their defensive set quickly enough. Days on Ingram taking advantage. Claxton. <laughs> a little bit shaky on the handle. Scooped up by Petty. Morris for three. Out of bounds to Georgia. Gets the shot down, gets the line. That's one, just give him that if he hits it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to foul. <laughs> Daniel Giddens on a 15-foot fade. 14-point lead for the tie. Hammonds finds Edwards. Off his foot, out of bounds. 12 points here in the second half. They've taken complete control of this game. 13 points for the Dogs in the second half. And Alabama playing great D and effective offensively. His teammate completely. But, uh, Joe Lindsay not buying it. This is something you could never relate to. Georgia has missed 15 of its last 20 shots. Well, when you're open, College players tend to tend to make those shots, but Alabama has contested the shots well. Numbers in the This one's getting away. Georgia needs to stop the bleeding. Claxton off the court. Obede, who's been very effective in this game tonight. Hard to find where Georgia's going to generate some points with this group on the court. Down by 16. Largest lead for Alabama. Hammonds corrals the air ball and he's at. I'm getting the easy two for Hammonds. Rayshon Hammonds, talented sophomore from Norcross. Had a career high 31 points. KCP was a pretty doggone good player now enjoying life in the NBA. Yeah, it's uh, real interesting in LA right now. <laughs> like everybody on the roster except Le LeBron James is, uh, there's talk of them departing the Lakers situation. Trying to pick up that former Kentucky Wildcat. <laughs> He's down there in New Orleans. Daddy lost it on a spin dribble. And now Hammond's ahead of the pack. Showtime. How oh, this rather spirited Alabama run. We're on pace to get to the season average in turnovers. You can see it's turned into 20 points for Crimson Tide. For the Crimson Tide. The shots that they have gotten, three-pointers and layups for the most part. Only six shots of the two-point variety for Alabama. Free-flowing and very effective and efficient offensively under Avery Johnson. Hammonds on his fourth foul. And here's Alabama. When Alabama gets to 70, good things happen. 13 and three when they hit that number. Two and five when they don't get to 70. Good sign for the Crimson Tide. Fouls each way here. 
with 8.46 to go. Both these teams still working hard. Both these coaches still working hard. Two of the more spirited coaches in the SEC. And Tom, you better move that camera left and right if we're following Tom <laughs> Crean. He's going to get his steps in. Three Good ball movement by Georgia. And you can see the, the sets. The things that Georgia tries to do offensively as the personnel and, and talent level improves at Georgia, you can see very good things on the horizon for the Dolphins. I need to get a pedometer on Tom Crean. I'd love to know. talk to you. The, you know, he deflects credit. I was asking him, just trying to get him to say, yeah, it's because of me that everybody in Georgia is so excited. That's why we're selling out these games. And he's just deflecting the attention to the players talking about the great fans in Athens and how excited they are about the future of Georgia basketball. Offensive foul on Andrew Meza. To uh, prospective NCAA tournament invitees. Georgia certainly came out swinging. Alabama took the dog's best punch in the first half. But in this second half, Alabama has dialed up some suffocating defense and has hit quite a few and ones on the offensive side. This guy's been pretty good, Kyra Lewis. So is this guy, Mack all the way. Missed it, got it back, and banked it home. Oh, that's going to drive Tom Green crazy. Tevin Mack's been so good, he's, he's not used to missing a shot. He was as, as surprised as anyone that that layup didn't go in. I guess the whole, uh, everybody on the court was surprised that he missed the shot. It's a season high 23 for Tevin Mack. Claxton missed it. Well, nothing going right for Georgia. 14 point cushion for the tie. Under seven minutes to play. Mack aggressive. How about it? Where has this been? Tevin Mack had a great game against Kentucky, and then his numbers just plummeted after that. If you get this out of Tevin Mack now, Alabama's a different team. Kyle Lewis Jr., as effective as he is, you combine that with the type of play that Tevin Mack is displaying tonight, this Alabama squad becomes a different animal. Ahead of the pack, and that has happened several. I shoot that ball like it's ringing the bell. Johnny B. Good back oh, in the 50s. Oh, you know? Okay, <laughs> I did not know Vanderbilt had a playlist on for Barry Booker. Uh, I, I predate, um, I predate the, the arena sound, <laughs> the, D, the DJs, and all that. Stuff. But you did come after the A track, you were more of the cassette tape <laughs> album version. It was the band, that's all we had. <laughs> Show your gold crowd. I know, oh, man. Yeah, I heard now. Oh, no return of the back on that three. Spirit of gold. There you go. Commodore Nation, send your emails, <laughs> tweets to one Barry Booker. Oh, man. It's been a long day. It's been a long day, Mike. <laughs> it's been a long second half for Georgia. Laxton misfires. Ty going to try to make him pay in transition. Lewis, wide open three. Laxton top floor for the rebound. Numbers for Georgia, don't pull oh, it out. Oh, Claxton <laughs> behind the back. Big man, where have you been hiding that move? So much better than his daddy. Nicholas getting to the rack with the behind the back maneuver. And you can see we're asking Avery Johnson, who would you compare him to? Lamar Odom is yeah, the like name that. that came up. Kyra Lewis, that might not make the same highlight reel, but it's just as effective, and he's been very effective today. 19 points, 7 assists for Lewis. And extremely efficient, extremely effective, quiet almost. Kyra Lewis Jr., but dominating this game, putting up some numbers. 17 years young. The youngest player that actually 
goes on the floor in all of Division I college basketball, and Lewis continues to put on a clinic. He was born in 2001. The movie that won the Oscar that year was Gladiator. And right now, we are entertained by Kyrie Day. Todd Austin, officials for tonight's ball game. We, we have not had one single monitor review today. We haven't had a hook and hold. We haven't had many fouls. It's been a well-played game overall, but Alabama's just been too much for Georgia in this second half. He's getting it done. 25 points, just two off his career high. Five of seven from three. Crimson Tide in charge. I was really wondering where you were going with that, yeah, partner. I was just stumbling, rumbling. Fiber rumbling. optic, LTE. <laughs> sure, why not? 5G. That's all the technical terminology I know. <laughs> oh, that was... That was a lot of fun. I hope you do that again. <laughs> Glad somebody enjoyed that. <laughs> hope the good folks at AT&T are I'm uh, sure concerned. they loved every bit of that. <laughs> Coming up on the three-minute mark, Alabama oh. can exhibit some patience. Flawless game before that miscue. And we've reached the point of the crowd where the fans are chanting Lawson Schaefer. Foul on the reach-in by Herbert in college football. Alabama number one, Georgia number two. these players make sure they get on balance they're using proper form and technique and that he is the primary shot doctor for this club but he wants each one of the players to be their own mechanic as he described their own shot mechanic well, that was all Jordan Harris he somehow knifed in to get the offensive rebound and then hit a three Jordan Harris after having play stopped on his behalf able to get back on the court good to see Harris was a young man who was actually wow. suspended indefinitely at the end of last year under the previous coaching staff. Could have easily just been written off. Alabama, big game for them. And in their upcoming schedule, they played the toughest schedule in the SEC so far. And still got some tough ones ahead. That's uh, not, not exactly a balanced schedule, but the Tide on the road for five of these last eight games in SEC play. Yeah, you see Vanderbilt up there, and, and I know your natural inclination is to say, well, they keep coming up short. At some point, the breaks are going to even out. They're going to get at least a W or two. Well, especially at Memorial Gym, where they're so much more confident, where they're so much better. You're going to see the might keep playing well. I'll tell you what, uh, it's a Commodore alum and part of that uh, three-point shooting streak. It's uh, it's right. They can go 0-18. But that's... at least hit some threes. Yeah, okay. hit a three in every game. Almost a turnover. Oh, reaching foul. In the NCAA tournament. We have some of those high-level wins, the quadrant one and quadrant two level wins. We're going to figure all that stuff out. Quadrants better than Barry Booker. I look forward to you doing that on Wednesday nights throughout the rest of the year. Well, it's value index. That's sort of the replacement for the RPI. That's one of the factors in net efficiency, which is offensive efficiency minus defensive efficiency. They subtract offensive rebounding out of that as well, which I, I don't think is the right approach, but that's how they decided to do it. That is the one college football, same type of things that we'd see in basketball, the RPI, strength of schedule, who your opponents faced, home versus away but that is just an off that, that is just a true success I think the NCAA has been using the efficiency ratings for the last few years and the other interesting interesting thing about that whole net calculation is it's secret they don't let out exactly how things are calculated and the reason that I know a couple of them they're fanatical to say the least, that's when it all started. But he is not our first post-9-11 SEC player. But we're getting it. Lawson Schaefer is in the game, and that can mean only one thing. Rabbit applause. But we have proof that they have been at the same place at the same time. They worked in Alabama game earlier this year and actually had a snapshot with Lawson Schaefer. 
Bain looked like that when he was 15. <laughs> Lead into the basket. High tap. 90 seconds remaining. Clear a game is over. Is over. So maybe Georgia can have some miraculous type of comeback here. Mike, this one for Lamont Waters. Did not. Uh, He's not walking through that door. Georgia Bulldogs <laughs> of the arena tonight. Skyler Mays is not walking through that door. <laughs> that is correct. And the Crimson Tide. We got Schaefer out there. He's a human victory cigar. <laughs> Done. Crump <laughs> uh, on a three. Uh, that would be the guy that could spark a comeback. Crump, the best three-point shooter on the team. Harris. He knocks it down. Ten-point game. <laughs> Does have the horses to erase a 14-point margin in the last few minutes of the game. You develop those habits. Folks, let's just put it that way. Next week, one in particular. It's SEC coaches. The guys that have come into the league of late, including these two, Avery Johnson and Tom Green, such an impressive group of coaches. They brought excitement. I'll be excited if this uh, actually becomes an opportunity for Georgia to, to be a power that you possess. I just would say it would be you being wrong is really all <laughs> I was going to predict at that point. All two. Your senior, big man, second among the leading scorers, one of the double figure guys on this team. Got a good night. The tide still rolls. Hammonds on a corner three. Tapped around and finally scooped up and you're, you're feeling really uneasy about things at that point. A bad mark on the resume. Alabama going to pull the, that scoring total. Kyle Lewis Jr. already a 20 plus point night. Silky so 24 points for the freshman. Pressure. Just slow it down, just trying to make Georgia burn some clock here. Balls may elect not to foul. They give up on this. Well, on a desperation three, barely touches the iron. And now, everybody, particularly in the second half, the offense got rolling, set up in part by the defense. Outstanding performance these days. That's modern basketball. You want layups, threes, and free throws. And Alabama's had all three. Final seconds tick away. Jackson launches a three, and it's been that kind of second half for Georgia. Rock will hit zero. Alabama will win it by 15.